Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're hopping into the next episode of Community. This is season number three, episode number eight, titled Documentary Filmmaking Redux. So last time on Community, we kind of, you know, moved Annie into Troy and Abed's apartment. She no longer has the the, the blanket fort or the, 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 the sheet fort or whatever they called it. She has her own room. It's Troy and Abed's room. Troy and Abed are now in the, the, the blanket fort, but they still have the dreamatorium. Jeff pretended to be sick. He was caught by, what was it, the Dean? So the Dean, um, he, he pretty much set it up. He was monitoring his, like, emails or something. And he was like, oh, Jeff, you know, funny to see you here. And basically he, he let it slip that he was monitoring the email. And it was like, oh, yeah, he was set it up so, you know, they can meet up and all that good stuff. And he has moved in. Britta and Shirley had themselves a little, uh, little escapade, you know, moving boxes from A to B, picking up a, a hitchhiker along the way who proclaimed to be Jesus. And, you know, funny stuff abound. Pierce tried to fix Annie's apartment. Something as simple as just re re replacing the plastic faceplate over the outlet turned into him spilling paint all over the place, getting high as fuck. The landlord comes in and is basically like, uh, yeah, so we need to do something about this. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say other than I'm looking forward to seeing what this is about. Obviously, the last time we had a documentary episode, it was one of my favorites. It was definitely one of the most creative and ambitious episodes, especially for a sitcom, because it kind of poked fun at, you know, other sitcoms that had that type of style, community, Parks and Rec, et cetera, et cetera. So to see community kind of turn it on its head a little bit, you know, taking those usual tropes and kind of just, you know, they're putting their own little spin on it. I love that. So we're just going to hop into this episode, have a good time, talk about it immediately afterwards. But before I do, I want to remind you guys that I do have Patreon. So if you want to avoid the YouTube highlights and watch this episode with me in its entirety right now, that option is available to you over on Patreon. Links in the description down below or pin in the top comment. If you can't support me on Patreon, you can always support me here on YouTube. All you got to do is drop a like. Comment down below what you want to see me react to. Next, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. And of course, share it with your friends. It helps you. It helps me. It helps the channel grow. Everybody wins in the end. Uh, yeah. And also, new camera angle, if you guys can tell. Let me know what you guys think. Patreon, of course, we'll be able to see this first. And, you know, if we keep it like this or we'll just shift it around. But, yeah, I'm just trying some new things out. But, yeah. Tangent over. Let's hop into the community. Talk about me afterwards. All right, guys. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Here we go. I go Greendale? So I can keep my job and get busy with my education. To meet different people. Because Greendale's a slam dunk. Greendale has the most advanced... This is old as fuck. It's like 90s. Greendale area. And now you can register by fax. That, as you probably know, is the currently running commercial for... Oh, school. we're already doing yeah, the documentary. I always see it okay. late. Greendale School Board has given me a budget of $2,000. I need your help. All of you. The school asks very little of its students. It mainly gives. Mm. I feel like you guys might know what I'm talking about. How can we help? Oh, oh my God. Asking. I've chosen you, Greendale's brightest, most coincidentally diverse, Hispanics notwithstanding, study group to star in our commercial. Abed, true to form, has decided to do the weird thing and film a documentary instead of helping. <laughs> What's the catering suit going to be on this picture? This isn't Hollywood Pierce. If it was, these glasses would be tented and I'd be friends with Stevie Nicks. So I'm not leaving my trailer till there's food. Trailer? I don't have a trailer. <laughs> well, then I'll rent a trailer and I won't leave it till I have the one I don't have. Go get the KFC trailer. A script supervisor is the person that tells everyone to stay on script. And I used to script supervise. To prevent logical inconsistencies. So, basically, the star. Not really. The camera pans and enter Dean Pelton. Oh my god. Welcome to Dean Dale Community College, Dean. I'm a silly goose. Honk, honk. Honk, honk. Stop. Wow. You hit gold. So <laughs> I think Jeff does a better Dean than the Dean. Why go Greendale? Just because. Just Dean it. Dean machine. And cut. Ah, oh, a star is born. This is incredible. I'm thinking about breaking into the TV game. Since it's apparently sticking around, I want to wake up in 30 years and wonder, what if? Under budget? Nice. Dean Deaning. Dean Pelton? Hey, man, how you doing? Louis Guzman. 
I'm sorry. I'm saying I love to be in your commercial. What? An actual star? A real big time celebrity wants to be in my commercial. Wow, we a real big time celebrity wants to be in my commercial. Come on down. And can I just say, I loved you in in <laughs> IMDb. <laughs> IMDb? That was tragic. Oof, that was rough. Everyone gather around, quick announcement. Come on around. Everything that we shot so far is worthless. I've thrown it out and we're starting over tomorrow morning. I've been through this too. When a director throws everything out. Everyone, go home. I'm rewriting all of your parts. That's not a good. Except for you, Jeffrey. <laughs> you have locked into something here. It's great that he got a celebrity, but why reshoot everything? Perfectionism. The Dean's first step down a road that ends in self-destruction. What? Oh, because of the um, the real celebrity. I'm ready to step this mother up a notch. This commercial is going to push every button, starting with the one that is so hot. And action. To meet different people. Cut. I'm coming in. I am trying to pull a 400-year-old dagger out of this nation's heart, and you two are hugging. Oh, I understand, but you? <laughs> what did I do? You didn't. Let's take it again. Tear down those walls. Can you get this wrong one more time? I'm segregating the school. <sighs> oh my God. Garrett, you're not taking advantage of the motion capture technology. You have to move. Oh. I forgot what I am again. Oh, for crying out You are a microscope. No, that's a toilet. Jeff thinks he has it bad. As Jeff's understudy, <laughs> I have a Jeff wig on top of my Chang here, and then my ball cap on top of that. It's but, Chang yeah, playing close. Jeff playing Are Dean. Sure it's amazing. Oh my God. The Dean is a genius. He has to be. I like how you saw the boom mic in the shot for a second. I will die protecting his vision. Are you by any chance familiar with Stockholm Syndrome? Is it something that the Dean created? Because if not, I don't care. Well, about time. Hey. That's for Luis Guzman. Well, when you get me my trailer, he can have it back. Dean, hey Dean. Pierce mistook me for the Dean today. I want windows. I knew that was gonna happen. You are not. Oh, yes, I am. Well then, you're wrong for the part. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. That's it. When you're done, go home. <laughs> go home. <laughs> As a licensed psychology major, I am declaring this production a violation of human rights. The Dean wants his role to be played by a Chinese man in a blonde wit. Oh my God, you are insane. Anyone who doesn't want to help me can leave. Yeah, saw that coming. Oh. I've been stumped. Okay. Keep rolling. <laughs> Hey! Hello, it's me, Louis Guzman. Mr. Guzman. Dean slash director, Craig Pelton. Sorry, I've been editing. It's a little bit of a mess. What the f is that? Oh, that's a possum. Once you spend some time with them, you see they're just like big gentle rats. Here is the commercial you will be starring in. Okay, let's see it. Why do I go Greendale? <laughs> I gotta make a phone call. I had to tell this Dean I couldn't do his commercial. <laughs> you won't be in my commercial, but you'll be in his stupid documentary. All he does is follow people around. Yeah, but haven't you seen Heart of Darkness? Oh, Way better than that. the hell off of my campus, you ungrateful backstabber. <laughs> Can anyone hear me? I will walk off this production. I will quit. You're worse than crazy. You're ashamed of your school. Don't worship the people leaving green there. Worship the people that are here. True, true. This is a special school. You don't deserve to be here. Are you still filming, Abed? Yeah, but try not to address me. I'm not really here. I don't think I can finish my commercial. Maybe Abed will finish it like he did with Shirley's, like he did with Shirley's. I have failed this school. I have failed it because I thought I was better than Greendale. 
but it turns out that the only thing wrong with Greendale is that it's run by an insecure wreck. But Greendale is good enough because it accepts me for when I'm not. Greendale is the best school in the entire world. And I'm sorry what I've done to the ice cream machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm horrible. The horror. The horror. Why do I go Greendale? The dean is a genius. I love my time. I got laid like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why should you? Pop, pop. I like good. that. Yeah, you know what? Better than good. Good enough. That's not my commercial. I, I didn't make that. Oh, Abed, cut it together. Chump's rusty bucket. Quarter taps. Did you do this? You did mostly. I thought you were a fly on the wall. Some flies are too awesome for the wall. Oh. Before you say anything. Nope, I've got nothing. Can you just forgive me? Yep. <sighs> Why? Because we've all been there. <sighs> See, this is why I love this show. Can someone help me get a live possum out of my office? <laughs> I'm sure Chang could probably wrestle it or something. Do you think you're prepared oh? and then it skitters again? Okay, scene's over. Twenty minutes, Mr. Garland. Right. Oh my. Oh. Planet Star. Okay, you know what? I'm not coming out of this trailer until I get a new trailer. Oh wow, guys. Okay, so that was season three, episode eight of Community Documentary Filmmaking Redux. Incredible episode. Honestly. This might be my favorite episode of the of the season. Now, I don't know about the series so far, but definitely of the season. I don't know, actually, but, but it's a really strong one, actually. I actually really enjoyed um, the, the human story that it was telling. I love all the characters that kind of came together to tell this collaborative story, this narrative. I love Ovid behind the camera. I love seeing like, all that behind the scenes stuff. There was a lot to love about this episode. Like from just all the little tiny character moments to just the kind of like the bigger story at large. It was kind of like, it almost felt like a, like a coming of age story for the Dean. Some sort of big, I don't know, it just felt like something that it was just there to kind of help the Dean kind of flesh him out a little bit more. You know, as like a person, which I really enjoyed, you know, because I always kind of felt like he's always been kind of like Chang and being that comedy punching bag, um, you know, and, and the fact that it kind of started out with Jeff playing as the Dean, you no, know, playing the Dean, you know, with bald cap, the glasses, the wardrobe, it started out almost like I was going to think it was going to be kind of like one of those, I don't know, like mean hearted or mean spirited type of uh, episodes where it's just to be like, oh, no, they're just gonna be making fun of the Dean the entire time. And yeah, I guess easy target, but I'm just like, well, that kind of sucks. But I'm glad it didn't go that route. I'm glad that there was something more to it and that it was just kind of like the start of everything. And then we got to kind of like follow Jeff's, you know, winding down into madness, <laughs> you know, and get to see more about where he is in this crazy production. Because I've been on, on film sets and film productions, nothing like super crazy, you know what I mean? Like, nothing like Hollywood, but... I've been on student film sets and I've been on, you know, to, to that level. And I've seen crazy, crazy directors. I've seen crazy actors. I've seen crazy things happen. You know, it is what it is. And I'm sure people that are kind of working in that industry at a higher level, who knows what they get into. You, you hear all the horror stories or at least some of the comedy stories, you know, like the stuff with Christian Bale freaking out on that one guy that walked into his shot. Then there's the, the the Tom Cruise one, you know, about he flipped out of this one guy for not respecting the COVID protocols or whatever. But just, you know, that type of those type of stories. And I'm kind of, I'm glad that we got to see a shade of that in this episode. Only it was told through Abed because he's very he's a very sympathetic person. That's what I really love about him in general. And he's very likable. So the fact that the Dean kind of like he 
was kind of falling apart at the end, but it, it took Abed to kind of fix everything, you know? I, I really enjoyed that. I love how Abed's kind of like this unsung hero. I think that's a good way to put it at this point because it always feels like he's there to do stuff um, that's beneficial for the rest of the crew or for the rest of the, 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 the study group as opposed to really you know, taking care of himself. He's always been a very selfless individual, which is why I really fuck with him as a character. But yeah, I really enjoyed all that. I kind of want to see definitely more, more of this type of, more of these type of episodes. Abed Central, you know, he, he's at the helm here. He, he knows what he's doing. He's in the driver's seat. He, he, he knows how to tell a story. He knows how to direct a film and um, get his vision across. So I really enjoyed that. And another thing that I kept teasing throughout the episode was the, well, I guess it's not even really teasing at this point, but it's Britta and Troy. They've been kind of sprinkling that along, I think ever since season one, where I got the hint that there was something happening between them. It was in that episode where Troy and Britta were, were doing the ballet, right? And I kind of feel like, oh, there might be something going on there, maybe, kind of, sort of. And then they kind of, you know... They let that go for a little bit, but then it kind of popped up again when Troy was in the drama class. You know what I mean? So that was cool. I'm glad they're actually doing something with that because it appears um, that everything else seems to be kind of stagnant, more or less. Pierce was doing his thing and he was the script supervisor, which is kind of like a... I wouldn't say it's a, like a shitty job, but it's kind of like tedious, you know what I mean? Um, it's just basically there just to check for continuity errors. And yes, it is very important, but if you have someone that says, all right, we're scrapping this, we're starting fresh, then your script supervisor, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the positions, it's gone. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't really know what else to say other than I really enjoyed this episode, loved it. I could talk about this show all day, every day. And you can already probably hear it in my voice. is starting to get a little parched. So I think I'm just going to wrap it up. Once again, enjoyable. I'd give it a solid 10. Perfect 10. I love these type of episodes, especially Obit Central. And I'm just going to leave it there. All right, guys. If you guys enjoyed my review, enjoyed my reaction, you guys want to see this video with me in its entirety, that option is available to you right now over on Patreon. Link's in the description down below or pinned in the top comment. If you can support me on Patreon, you can always support me here on YouTube. All you got to do is drop a like. Comment down below if you want to see me react to next. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. And of course, share it with your friends. It helps me. It helps you. It helps the channel grow. Everybody wins in the end. I'm going to get out of here and I'll catch you guys next time in the next episode of Pinot. All right, guys. Adios.